Everyone loves a little conspiracy theory once in a while. They may not be true, but they're interesting nonetheless. The internet happens to be a great place to spread conspiracy theories around. One of these conspiracy theories is about the existence of aliens and UFOs. Why haven't we been contacted by aliens yet? Have they already invaded and the government isn't telling us? These are questions that conspiracy theorists ask quite often. But some conspiracy theories have even made it to the big screen. Movies are a great way to bring life to aliens and the possibility of them existing. Several movies even use conspiracy theories for their own plots, whether to make fun of them or to seriously take a dive into them. Men in Black happens to be one of the former. The 1997 classic is about a secret organization called Men in Black, which consisted of men, in black suits, who keep an eye on extraterrestrial beings that live on Earth, and they work to hide their existence from ordinary humans. Guess what, though? The Men in Black did exist in real life, but not in the way you think. I mean, if you think about it, if the government really is keeping information about aliens hidden from us, it has got to be the worst kept secret in the history of keeping secrets. With numerous UFO sightings, rumors of green little men, the whole Area 51 conspiracy, alien abductions and whatnot, it seems like humanity already knows a lot about aliens. Or at least that's what conspiracy theorists and ufologists want you to think. We've seen several movies on this stuff and the thing is, it really is pop culture that's been feeding us with this stuff, to the point where it's actually become boring. Devout ufologists may interpret this as more proof that our governments know something about aliens and their modes of transportation, but it actually proves the opposite, that the UFO community is a perfect example of a naive group prone to deception. They've spent far too much time monitoring the sky and watching X-Files, to the point where they will gladly accept whatever tidbit of evidence fits their larger hypothesis. So where did it all really start? It's likely that the Men in Black's tale may be traced back to one day, June 27, 1947. It all began on a boat with a man, a boy, and a dog. According to the report, Harold Dahl was on a conservation mission on the eastern side of Washington's Maury Island collecting logs when he noticed six donut-shaped objects floating approximately a half mile above his boat. Soon after, one of them crashed about 1,500 feet, followed by a cascade of metallic debris some of which struck Dahl's son, Charles, as well as the family dog, who died due to the trauma. Dahl was able to photograph the aircraft with his camera, which he later presented to his boss, Fred Chrisman. Chrisman returned to the location to see for himself and spotted a weird aircraft with his own eyes. Dahl recounted this incident to all of his neighbors and friends as well. Only a few days afterward, Dahl claimed a man in a black suit visited him at the diner and recounted those exact same events to him in great detail. This showed that the man had a great deal of knowledge about the issue. After this, the man in black told Dahl not to speak of the incident, or else bad things would happen to him. The alleged events of Maury Island have continued to inspire conspiracy theories to this day. Despite the fact that a U.S. government inquiry concluded it was a hoax when Dahl and Chrisman eventually confessed. The description of the guy in the black suit in particular would become a major focus for UFO enthusiasts and would later seep into American pop culture. Because the questions still stand, maybe Dahl only called it a hoax because he was told to. Albert K. Bender had a special fascination towards the supernatural, which coincided with a series of well-publicized flying saucer sightings in the American West during the late 1940s. This motivated Bender to establish one of America's first UFO groups, the International Flying Saucer Bureau was founded in 1952 by him. The IFSB reached out to members all around the world shortly after its inception through a quarterly journal called Space Review. The journal included accounts of UFO encounters as well as hypotheses regarding the origins of these apparently unexplained objects. To continue his experiments, Bender requested readers of Space Review to learn and quietly repeat a telepathic message on a specific day and time. Albert's objective was to communicate with alien species through the simultaneous thought projection of IFSB members. World Contact Day, or Sea Day as Bender and the IFSB dubbed it, began at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 15, 1953. The magnificent telepathic communication began, and the message they were sending out telepathically was, 
Calling all occupants of interplanetary craft. Calling all occupants of interplanetary craft that have been observing our planet Earth. We of the IFSB contact you. We are your friends. Strange happenings started tormenting Bender in Bridgeport as soon as he began the IFSB. The researcher was plagued by ill health, weird phone calls, and psychic communications. These occurrences coincided with an increase in UFO sightings over southern Connecticut. Albert also had the impression that he was being observed. He noticed a weird guy with luminous eyes watching him at a neighborhood movie theater in November of 1952, and he reported being trailed while going home along Main Street. On another occasion, late one night on Broad Street, Bender claimed to have been telepathically entranced and levitated. The most disturbing occurrence, however, was the terrible stench that filled his attic, the odor of burnt sulfur. In the attic, a yellow mist had formed. Undaunted, Bender promised a startling discovery in the July issue of Space Review. It was never published. Three men paid Albert Bender a visit at his residence in July of 1953. They were all dressed in black, Bender said. They had the appearance of clergymen, but they wore hats. The infamous men in black made it clear to Bender that all UFO work had to be halted immediately. Stop publishing, they told him telepathically. Before leaving, the MIB confiscated papers of space review, and a yellow cloud appeared in their wake. The horrible odor of sulfur floated through the attic once more. Albert, disturbed by their unearthly aura, trembled and said he was scared to death and couldn't eat for days. He was subjected to multiple MIB visits. Albert was forced to close the International Flying Saucer Bureau due to psychic communications, migraines, being stalked, and, of course, strange threats from the men in black. The final edition of Space Review was published in October of 1953, a year and a half after the IFSB was founded. It had a mysterious message and a warning. The mystery of the flying saucers is no longer a mystery. The source is already known, but any information about this is being withheld by orders from a higher source. We would like to print the full story in Space Review, but because of the nature of the information, we have been advised in the negative. We advise those engaged in saucer work to be very cautious. Gray Barker, another IFSB member, wrote the book They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers in 1956, in which Barker discussed Albert's Bridgeport experiences and used the phrase men in black for the first time. Bender likewise detailed his peculiar personal narrative in the fascinating book titled Flying Saucers and the Three Men, a decade after his own encounter. Albert emphasized that the dark-suited men were mind-controlling silencers. It's worth noting that the Maury Incident account did not receive much attention in the UFO community until Gray Barker's book was published. In the book which he talked of his file on the Maury Island case, Barker then linked the man in the black suit, who took Dahl to breakfast, to the three similarly dressed men who visited Albert Bender. It is interesting to note, though, that Gray Barker actually doesn't take the concept of men in black seriously. He does, however, believe that there is the whole thing with the UFOs, and that the paranormal is quite mysterious. Whether or not these incidences really happened to the people mentioned, or were just made up by their imaginations, they did make their way into the pop culture alien conspiracy genre. Now we have comics named after them, and a whole movie franchise that followed. Whatever the men in black were trying to do, clearly didn't succeed because the whole world now knows about them. Or maybe that's what they want us to believe. Maybe they want us to think that we know everything. In any case, don't dig too deep into it or you might get the men in black visit of your own. Tell us down below your thoughts on this story. And as always, thanks for watching.